In this video, we're going to take a look at some properties that we can use when working with logarithms. The first property I want to talk about is called the product property. And that property says that if we have the log base b of m times n, that's equal to the log of base b of m plus the log base b of n. Now, this property can be used in either direction. So many times we'll have two logs that are being added together. We can take the product of our m and n pieces and simplify it to get that single log. One thing that's key is that we have the same base on both logarithms. If we do not, we cannot make that combination. We can't combine them like that. The second property I want to look at excuse me, it's called the quotient property. And in that property, if we have the log base b of m over n, or m divided by n, that's equal to the log base b of m minus the log base b of n. And again, that could be used in either direction. Many times we'll have logarithms which are being subtracted again we can simplify them by doing that division another property I want to take a look at is called the power property and that's where logarithms are really useful when we get to solving some um, exponential equations because it'll allow us to pull an exponent down that property says that if we have the log base b of a and a is to a power p that's equal to, we can pull that p out front, p times the log base b of a. So we can take that power right there, pull it out in front, and have it be multiplied by our logarithm. That's the power property. And finally, the last property I want to talk about is the base change property. We know that our calculators typically can only do logs base 10. Well, sometimes we have logs of other bases, and we have to have a way to deal with them and get them into our calculator. And how we do that is if we have the log base b of x, that's going to be equal to the log base a of x over the log base a of b. Now, typically our A is going to be 10, but sometimes we might want to change to another base. So it can be any base that we want, but most of the time we're going to change it to base 10, which will allow us to put it into our calculator and get some numbers for those logarithms. All right, let's take a look at some examples here. This first one, we've got addition going on. So what we can do, remember, the property where we add logarithms, we have to multiply these two things. So we're going to multiply the 16 times 4. Also remember, look at the bases, make sure the bases are the same before you start multiplying. So 16 times 4, well I have the log base 2 of 16 times 4, which would be 64. Then, can I simplify that more? Hmm. Well, remember what the logarithm means is 2, that base, to what power gives me 64? Well, 2, hmm, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64. That's 6 times, so this would be just 6 because again 2 to the 6th power gives me 64 let's take a look at this next one here we have the log base 10 of 250 plus the log base 10 of 40 same bases so then they're being added so what we're going to do is multiply these two numbers so we have the log base 10 of 250 times 40 well, let's just grab the calculator and make sure I'm doing this right. I don't want to goof it up. I have a pretty good idea what it's going to be, but I want to be positive. 
10,000. That's what I thought. Okay, so the log base 10 of 10,000. Now, can I simplify? Well, remember this means 10 to what power gives me 10,000? Well, 10 squared is 100. 10 times 10 to the third power would be 1,000 times another 10 would be 10,000. So that would be 10 to the fourth power. So the log base 10 of 10,000 is 4. Let's take a look at this next one. In this case we have the log base 2 of 160 minus the log base 2 of 5. Now we're subtracting. So we grab that quotient property which remember says we have that subtraction so we're going to divide these two numbers so it's 160 divided by 5 okay so now let's simplify that so we have the log base 2 of 160 divided by 5 well that would be 32 okay now we start thinking again 2 to what power gives me 32 well up here I did 2 to the 6th got me 64 so 2 to the 5th must be 32 so this is just equal to 5 alright now let's hop up on top there and take a look at this next one for this one it's subtraction again so we're gonna do that division just like we did in the last one so we have the log base 4 of 128 divided by 8 Oops. 128 divided by 8 128 divided by 8 well, let's just take the handy dandy calculator here 128 divided by 8 is 16 okay so we have the log base 4 of 16 again 4 to what power gives me 16 well 4 times 4 is 16 so that is equal to 2 alright now this next one I've got that power situation and remember what I can do if I have that power is pull it out in front so I have 4 times the log of base 5 of 5 well the log base 5 of 5 can I simplify that yes I can 5 to the first power would get me 5 so this whole thing just becomes 1 and I have 4 times 1 which is of course just 4 next one similar situation we've got a power again that's a 4 again huh I'll take that 4 pull it out front so we have 4 times the log of 4 a base 4 of 64 then 4 to what power gets me 64 well 4 times 4 is 16 times another 4 would be 64 so 4 to the third power is 64 so this part of it becomes 3 so we just have 4 times 3 which is 12 alright now let's hope, hop over here and take a look at some of those base change ones in this one in order to simplify well I can't put it in my calculator as it sits so I need to use that base change formula and for that I take the log I want base 10 since that's what my calculator does remember if I don't write a base it's base 10 so I say the log of 7 over the log of 3 so again if you're changing to base 10 take the log just forget that base and change it to the one you want typically 10 and then on the on the bottom in our denominator will have the log of this number now I can throw those into my calculator because they're base 10 and figure out what it's going to be so we have 7 take the log of that that's equal to approximately 0.84 let's get a couple more decimals here 0 0.8451 we'll say it's 0.8451 over log of 3 take 3 take the log that'll be 0.4771 okay then I'll just divide that and 
really we should write this as approximately because we're doing some um, rounding as we write those decimals obviously we see there's a lot more than the ones I wrote down so we have 0 0.8451 divided by 0 0.4771 which is equal to 1.771 so it's approximately equal to 1.771 all right let's try another one similar type situation we want to change it to base 10 so we can put in our calculator so on top I just take this call this the new base which is base 10 what we're interested in and then I'm gonna divide by the log of that original base so I have the log of 8 then I'm gonna take some approximations of those two pieces the log of 21 21 take my log 1.322 so we have 1.322 and then the log of 8 which is going to be 8 take the log 9.031 we'll say 0.9031 okay then finally do that division so we have 1.322 divided by 0 0.9031 and that's going to be equal to approximately 1.464 so that's equal to approximately 1.464 if I round to the nearest thousandth <clears throat> alright so we just took a look at a bunch of different properties <laughs> excuse me <coughs> A bunch of different properties of logarithms. The product property, which said if we have two that we're multiply or that we're adding together, we're going to multiply those numbers that we're taking the logs of to do some simplification. If we're subtracting, we're going to divide, and vice versa. Of course, we didn't look at the vice versa situation, but we can apply the properties in that way. Also, if we have a power here, we can pull that power out front and then perhaps do some simplification or if we need to get an approximation for these logarithms remember we can use the base change here we'll change it to the base of 10 because that's what our calculator can do and get an approximation for those particular logarithms hope this video was helpful keep working hard on your math and I know you'll do great